How's it going? So doing this video by request, um, trying to finish off the AMC 10B for as many as I can. One of the commenters had asked to do the 12B, the last five questions. I'm not sure I can do all five, but I can do this one. Uh, before we start the video, I wanted to give a shout out to some viewers from Bangladesh. About 30% of my viewers come from outside the US. I think that's pretty cool. Technology is amazing. Cool to see you guys in other countries and gals, whoever's out there watching, um, supporting the channel and watching it to uh, edify yourselves. So if you don't know where Bangladesh is, I'm not sure it's going to show on here, but uh, here's Bangladesh right here. And if I scroll this way, you will see India, which, um, yeah, it's there. And then China up there. So there's Bangladesh right in the middle. You guys are awesome. Thanks for watching all the way from Bangladesh. If you guys want to shout out for your country, leave a comment for it. I'll do that. It's cool. All right, so this is not entirely my solution. I'm actually improving upon a solution given by AOPS user QQQWERW, whatever that means. It looks like a random assortment of letters, uh, who noted that it was his first solution on the AOPS problems. I thought it was uh, well written, well done, and uh, you should give more solutions if you ever happen to see this video. Let's get started. How many, now it's not entirely his, it is mostly his, but I'm improving upon some of the explanations that he gave. How many positive integers n, okay, so n's an integer, satisfy this expression where n plus 1,000 over 70 is equal to, this is weird now, it's the square root of n and then the greatest integer uh, less than or equal to that value. So rounded down, basically. It's just the floor function, and you might call it that. It's also called greatest integer function. Um, so it even note it here for you. Recall that this is the greatest integer not exceeding x. My thought is if you're answering question 24 on any AMC, uh, you probably know that. But they did it because they're nice. They're letting you know. Okay, so we got the answers. How do we approach this? Well... The first thing you might think of is what we said, this is an integer. So if this is going to be an integer, once you round it down, the left side must be an integer also, which means we can play around with this 70 has to divide into it. So for example, I know that if I write it as n plus 20 plus 980 over 70, that the expression on the left must be divisible by 70 because the expression on the right is divisible by 70. This means that n needs to be a, a number um, that is 20 less than a multiple of 70. Okay, so that way when I add 20 to it, it becomes a multiple of 70. Um, in modular arithmetic, we would say that n is congruent to 50 mod 70. It would have a remainder of 50, right? But we don't need to go full modular arithmetic on this, but it's good to make these kinds of connections. Let's just give it a substitution. We're gonna say that n, not plus, rather n is equal to some multiple of 70 plus 50. We don't know what that multiple is. Keep in mind, we know that x is an integer. This means is an element of capital Z with double bar means the set of integers. You'll learn that in set theory or number theory later on in life if you haven't learned it yet. So then let's go ahead and take this expression that we found, which is a new piece of information that we've generated and plug it back into the expression at hand. It will now say 70x plus 1050 over 70 is equal to the greatest integer less than or equal to the square root of 70x plus 50. Great. Okay, well this divides into that now, which is why we did it. And so we're going to get x plus 15 because seven times 15 is 105, correct? And this will be equal to that greatest integer expression. Um, another thing is when you're doing the test, do not necessarily keep writing everything every time. No, it doesn't matter. You're not turning your work in. It's just for you. If you can look here and go, oh, self, that's the same as this, then don't write it. Those seconds can be precious, especially at the end of the test and even early in the test, which allows you to answer questions like this. 
Okay, so now we have to do some thinking, okay? There is something you should know about this. And if you use this, you can use it if you want to. Um, if you have x, any number inside of a greatest integer function, it is equal to that same number minus, and we write it like this, and that means the fractional part of x. So for example, if it was 2.19, then this would be 0 0.19 and x would be 2.19, and when you subtract it, it's the equivalent of rounding it down to 2. So you can branch off to this if you need to. It will actually lead you to what we're about to say, but we can actually apply pure thought to this, right? This is an integer, but it's either bigger than this number, but not more than one bigger than it. If it was more than one bigger than it, it would equal x plus 16 when you rounded it down, right? So it's like x plus 15 plus a tiny small fractional amount, which means we can say that x plus 15 has to be less than or equal to this expression, right? This is gonna have to be at least this size, likely a little bit more. And we can say that it's less than or equal to the square root of 70x plus 50. But that's not all we can say. We also know that this needs to be sandwiched between two integers. If it was, again, more than one larger than this, it would not round down to this. It would round down to the larger value. So we can say that this is x plus 16. Okay, so now we've got an inequality. At least we don't have to deal with greatest integer anymore, right? That's the goal. Make complicated things easier to work with. So let's just explore these two things. I'm going to do this one individually. We're going to square both sides. We're going to get x squared plus 30x plus 225. You should be at a point where you can expand just as fast. Square root, uh, or less than or equal to, the square root is gone now. It's 70x plus 50. We're going to move these to this side to keep a positive x squared. x squared minus 40x plus 175 less than or equal to 0. Now we got a factor. The first thought that comes to mind is 25 and 7 because 7 quarters is $1.75. But these don't make 40, they make 32. So what if we took a 5 from here, moved it over, we would now have 5 and 35. That makes this. In fact, we're, we're looking to see what the zeros are, right? Because we have an inequality. We don't need to actually write the factorization. I'll write it for your benefit, but on my paper, I would not have written it. Okay, because I just wanted to know what these were. Now we're going to use a to topic you'll sometimes be taught in an honors algebra 2 class, maybe a pre-cal. If not, someone teaches it to you somewhere on AOPS, I'm certain. That is, this is a parabola, right? And it's positive A, so it's facing up. We're looking for less than or equal to zero, which would be the Y value, which means we're below or on the X axis. This is 5. This is 35. We don't need to do other ways of evaluating inequalities. We know that we're somewhere in this range right here. So we're going to say that x is greater than or equal to 5 and less than or equal to 35 because it has to be less than or equal to 0. Again, this would be the y value. And since the x-axis is y equals 0, staying below that is the equivalent or on it because we have the equal sign. Now let's do the other one. We're going to square both sides again. You will get 70x plus 50 is less than x squared plus 32x plus 256. 256. Okay, let's move to the positive again. So we're going to have 0 less than x squared minus 38x plus 206. Now, we're not going to factor that. So let's go, because it's only 2 and 103, and 103 is prime because 101 and 103 are twin primes. If I learned that somewhere in the AOPS book, I think too. Anyhow, uh, let's do the quadratic formula to this. So negative b is 38, plus or minus the square root. Again, we're just looking for the zeros, right? Because we're going to have, again, a parabola. This is a, a quadratic, which makes parabolas. But now we want to be greater than it, which means we want this part of it and this part of it. So we're looking for the two zeros that will help us determine, again, restrictions on the variable of x. So now, uh, what are we going to get? b squared is going to be 38 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1 times 206. 
Now, I know what you might be thinking at this point on the test. Oh, I've got a square 38. Stop that. Look for shortcuts. This is an even number. Since it's being squared, that's two even numbers. I can take a two out of both of those, giving us a four. It matches that four. And now you can factor out that four, the two because two A is two. So then what does that mean? Um, if I factor out that four, it becomes a two on the outside of the square root, right? So the 38 is going to get cut in half to become 19. The two, which would be here, which came from this four is going to cancel that two. Okay. So we're going to have 19 plus or minus the square root. Don't forget, we took two twos out of the 38, making each of them 19. You will have 19 squared minus 206. I'm running out of space and I'm somewhat tall, so it's hard to write down here. Deal with it. Bear with it, right? Okay, so uh, the 2 is now canceled. That's why we only have this. 19 squared is 361. 361 minus 206 is going to be 155. So what we have is 19 plus or minus the square root of 155. That means this one right here is 19 minus the square root. Again, don't write what's inside because you can see it right over there on your paper. You don't need to keep writing it, right? Okay, so what is the square root of 155? Well, square root of 169 is 13 and 144 is 12. It's a number between 12 and 13. Let's just call it something random like 12.6. Who cares? It doesn't matter for our purposes. You'll see why. 19 minus 12.6 approximately, who knows if that's exactly right, could be off by a little bit, um, is going to give you something between 6 and 7, like 6.4 approximately, right? And this might not be that approximate, but we know it's more than 6 and less than 7. Okay, since that's there, you need to be on this side of it. And we know that x is an integer. Since x has to be less than about 6.4, that's the same as saying x is less than or equal to 6 because x is an element of the integers. Similarly, on the other side, if we add 12 point whatever, it's going to be 31 point whatever. But x is an integer and it's bigger than 31 point whatever, which means it will be greater than or equal to 32. Now, we just put this all together, okay? So if x is greater than or equal to 5, but less than or equal to 6, 5 and 6 work, right? So um, it's one of these values. Also, it's greater than or equal to 32, but less than or equal to 35. That means 32, 33, I don't have space, 34, 35, all of these work. That's six values. That will make the answer six. If you have the time, you should probably plug one in at random and see what happens. Let's do, man, I don't know. Uh, let's do the six, I guess. If we plug in X is six, keep in mind, it's 70 times six is 420 plus 50 is 470, okay? So I would have 470 plus 1,000 is 1470 over 70. 70 goes into 1,400 20 times and 71 time. So this is going to equal 21. Okay, so now we know that side's 21, but now we need the square root of 470. Again, the square root of 441 would be 21, and 22 squared, it would be 484. This is between those two values. So it's gonna fall back to 21, exactly equal to this. Proof of concept, answer is six. I will see you guys in the next video. Enjoy your weekend.